Canadian Campaholic here with a repair video for you today. I'm sorry about the crappy uh, camera quality here. I seem to have misplaced my selfie stick, so I'm holding the camera by hand. Hopefully it's not too wobbly. So in an, or a video that we posted earlier this season, you heard me going on about how great our trailer was and how we hadn't had any major issues and everything was working wonderfully. Well, I spoke too soon. Uh, back in late May, we went uh, to Turkey Point Provincial Park, one of our favorite parks to visit, and we switched on the hot water heater. Uh, we'd made sure that we turned the propane on, bled the air out of the lines by uh, running the stove for a little bit. Uh, the hot water heater ignited, everything ran, everything was great. Um, we shut it off once it had got the water to temperature. We don't typically use an awful lot of hot water and we didn't want to just leave it running. So then the next morning when we got up, we had breakfast. We're going to do some dishes. We want to make sure we've got piping hot water to clean those greasy dishes. Switched on the Suburban uh, SW6D, I think it is, uh, is the uh, serial number, model number. And it seemed to take a long time for anything to happen. The electrode appeared to start sort of ticking or sparking. It tried to ignite and it would run for probably about 30 seconds and then it would just go out. And then it would start pumping gas again in an attempt to light, but no necessary, no spark actually happening. And then it would shut off and go into a fault mode. So at first I thought, uh oh, you know, we've run out of uh, propane or the propane tank is running low. Let's change the tank. Put a brand new tank of uh, propane on there, 20 pound tank. Um, again, bled the air out of the lines, flip the switch, same thing again. It ignited, it, it was running rough, it didn't seem the, to be running properly, and um, it kept switching off. Now, when it comes to something like a hot water tank, you really want to be careful when you're working with these. If it was anything to do with the gas lines or fittings, I would not even attempt to troubleshoot it, but I did um, open up the door to the, the access panel door. Um, I took off the metal flue and took a look at the igniter and a few other areas to see maybe there were some spider webs or debris or something in there that was blocking it. Couldn't see anything obvious. So I decided just to shut her down and leave it. And I reached out to the RV dealer that we bought the uh, trailer from. And it's kind of funny because when we bought the trailer and we spoke to him, one of the questions I asked him was, you know, how often do you get these trailers coming back on warranty uh, work? And his answer to me was, oh, very rare, but we did get a bunch of them with the suburban water heaters that had issues with the control board. And sure enough, when the kind folks at Smithville RV wrote back to me, they said very likely it's the control board. They did offer to inquire about it being um, under warranty with the manufacturer, but we were camping again uh, very soon after, and I was kind of impatient. So I hopped on Amazon. Um, I got a suburban um, manufactured board that was compatible with the hot water heater. Uh, also bought a new electrode or a new spark plug, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what you're about to see is the actual repair itself, and I'm pleased to report it was very successful. We went camping this past weekend at an RV park, and everything worked flawlessly. So let's uh, head on over to the storage facility and see what's what. So fixing the hot water tank, and fingers crossed the fix actually stays fixed. Um, we just did a test where I ran the water heater and it ignited and we had flame and the flame lasted for a good seven or eight minutes and just kept running. Uh, as you heard me describe at the beginning of the video, that is far longer than it was running before. So I'm going to assume that uh, everything is good. But the first thing I replaced was of course the electrode or the igniter. That's uh, this little guy here. Uh, very simple to uh, uninstall. Basically, there's two screws that hold this baffle or this flue onto the unit. Oops, sorry, approximately here. So I removed the two screws and took the baffle off. That's the right term. Um, I'm not going to touch it right now because it's just been running and it's hot, but you basically pull that rubber shield gently back off of the igniter. It's basically like a spark plug in your lawnmower or in your car. Um, and you just pull the blade connection off and remove that one single screw. And then this guy, this is the old one, comes out. And putting it back in, uh, you gotta make sure that the tips of the electrode are in the flame. So through the burner tube there, the flame shoots out into the combustion chamber. You gotta make sure these two tips are in that flame, but really because of where the screw is placed, and where it is on there, um, as long as it's not tilted, 
um, it's almost impossible to not get it in the right spot. So don't know if this was one of the issues, but um, this was about $20 on Amazon, so I bought that. So that's part one. Part two of the repair was a little bit more involved. This is the control board. This is actually the old control board uh, that I've taken out of the water heater. Uh, this is a Suburban uh, part number 520, 520, <laughs> part number 520814. And this is again for a SW6D, direct spark ignition hot water heater. It does not have an electric element, gas only. It's in this little housing. It just basically snaps into this housing. And all you have is a ribbon cable that goes on to the end here. And then you have the igniter cable that goes on here. So a minute ago outside, we were showing you that red cable with the blade connection. It goes on here. And basically, this is what controls the entire hot water heater. So when you come up to the panel and you switch on your DSI, Direct Spark Ignition Hot Water Heater, sends power to this control board, which then operates the system. Uh, it is very much plug and play. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if this required any repairs to any of the gas line components, regulators, uh, any of the gas connections, I would not be touching it. I would be taking it to a qualified licensed professional. But in this case, it is literally just two connections, one ribbon connection here, one blade connection here, and a couple of screws. So for us, we've got the compartments open here. Don't mind the cloves down there. Keep the mice out. That's the hot water tank. And you can see the new control board right there. I haven't bolted it back in place. But again, it's uh, it came in the same kind of container. You've got the, uh, the ribbon connection on the bottom there, or the multi-wire connection plug, whatever you want to call it. And then the igniter cable is over there. Basically, in my case, what they did was they bolted it to the frame up inside there. And I know you can barely see that, but where those two screw holes are over there, that's where they had screwed it to the frame. So I had to remove our kitchen drawer out of the way and then reach in on this side with my left hand with the screwdriver and then reach up underneath here with my right hand to stop it falling down and being damaged. But it literally was a case of taking out the two screws to take that whole mounting bracket off carefully uh, removing the wiring and then reconnecting it. Now, the one uh, tip I will give you is take a photograph of the wiring so that when you go to put it back together, everything's where it should be. Um, and then that way you know that everything is going to be working just fine. So what I need to do here is basically very carefully maneuver that back into position, uh, put the screws back in place, uh, do another quick test of the water heater, make sure it's still working, and then I can put everything back together. All right, so everything is screwed back together, back in place exactly where it was before. I made sure that all of the wiring connections are all back. There it is up there, the way they need to be. There is a sticky uh, adhesive rubber, uh, sorry, foam pad that you could use to stick it to something, but uh, I'm going to put it back the way the manufacturers installed it, and we're going to get up here. Let's go switch her on and make sure that everything is still working as it should be. So I've uh, turned the gas on on the burners there to bleed out any air. We've got propane in the tank, batteries connected, so let's switch her on, go outside, see what happens. Takes a second. And we have ignition. The igniter's still running, which is good to make sure that that gas is absolutely lit. Before it wasn't doing that, it was only sort of sparking once. We've got a nice blue flame. And basically, we're gonna let it run here for a few minutes. Make sure there's water in the tank, of course. We left uh, the water in the hot water tank when we left the campsite a couple of days ago. I'm gonna put a little bit of extra silicone around the bottom of the igniter wire there, just in the process of moving everything. It pulled it out a little bit, so I'm just gonna top that up once everything's cooled down. Yes, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully, uh, we are okay. We did check the uh, the breakers here that can be tripped to reset that. But as I was mentioning inside, if it was any of this metal part that needed to be replaced where your gas is coming into the system, I wouldn't be touching it. I would not be attempting to fix that. I would, uh, and, and if this repair doesn't work, I will take it to a dealer and have a qualified technician fix it. But really for a couple of screws, a little bit of plug and play, 
about $150 on Amazon, this was a fairly straightforward fix. We could probably live without it. We could use a kettle to boil water for dishes, but we're staying at a full service RV park when I get back from my business trip. And I wanna be able to use the city water connection and then have a hot shower. So um, yeah, success. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, you found this video helpful. I know it was very brief, it was very straightforward, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I spoke too soon when I said we hadn't had any major failures. So another little repair to do, but this is all part of owning a travel trailer. So anyway, happy camping and we'll talk to you later.